Hi everybody, Dr. Paula Sauer here. I am here to talk to you today about your kneecap. What do you do when you have pain in the front of your knee um, or on the side of your kneecap and you can't get in to see a physical therapist or a doctor right now because you're quarantined at home or you're just stuck at home or you simply just don't have the money to go and see somebody. So what do I do if my knee is hurting on the front of my knee, really is what we're addressing. Um, this is a self-care, self-release technique that I'm gonna go over today. And this is to help with some of the tightness that you may be experiencing in your body. This is not the only thing to do for your knee. This is only one step. So what I want you to think about is your kneecap is in the front of your knee. It's called your patella. So the patella is a flu, it's a bone that's embedded in your quadricep uh, tendon. So the quad is the muscle on the front of your thigh and the patella uh, is embedded in the part that becomes the tendon. There's a lot of other thick, uh, fascial fibers that run into this area because it's an area of transition. You have the big strong quad muscle coming into a very large broad tendon that attaches onto your tibia. And then you've got the IT band on the side, which from a fascial perspective really kind of blends in and becomes part of the vastus lateralis, which goes all the way back here. Okay, so some people think this part is your hamstring. It's not. This is part of the vastus lateralis. So the hamstring's gonna be back here more, okay? So this goes all along the side onto the front here. Vastus lateralis is a really broad quadricep muscle, part of the quadricep muscle. Then you've got other parts of your quad that run up the front and then in the inside here. So um, the patella can do a lot of things. It can, it's supposed to slide and glide in this groove, much like a train on a train track but it can tilt to the side like that. And it can also kind of track weird and go off to the side. And this is what's gonna cause this irritation on the lateral side of your knee or the outer part of your knee. It can also translate down into pain down here in the front in your patellar tendon. So this technique is a self-release technique. You need either a yoga block, uh, a ball of some sort like a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball even if it's a toy for your dog or your pet or even your kid you can take one of these items what is not acceptable um, don't use anything like a knife please don't do that <laughs> um, please don't do use anything that's really textured in an aggressive way um, you want to use something that's going to peg down the tissue and kind of move it in, um, in different directions. So if, if this is the tissue and I'm pushing down, I'm gonna go back and forth, up and down, circles in each direction, move to the next spot, okay? So you see how that kind of pegs the flesh down and takes and moves the flesh away from the bone and separates some of that fascial tissue. So this is a fascial release. You can do this fascial release on a lot of things in your body. This one is in particular is to address the um, patellofemoral joint specifically, okay? So another view, this is where your IT band is, it runs down the side of your leg, comes all the way up from your hip, goes down here. Your vastus lateralis runs on each side of it. So it runs front on the anterior part and it also runs back behind here. So your vastus lateralis goes all the way back this way. So it's pretty broad and very fibrous down here all along where it, the IT band rests over it. Same with back here. And this can be from a fascial perspective where things get really tight on a lot of us. Then you're gonna have this area, this is where the kneecap is, this area here is gonna be really tender and really fibrotic. This is where we're gonna do a lot of the work and we're gonna run up. I want you to think of, you know, the Adidas stripes where you have the three stripes. I want you to think you're gonna work these three stripes with some kind of tool here, all right? I've drawn on my kneecap here so you can get an idea where the patella is. 
you can see I'm moving it around. It can slide and glide this way and slide and glide this way. What happens is that this can tilt like this or it can go this way. That's when we have dysfunction in our knee here in our patellofemoral joint. Okay, so using a ball, you can place this as a, got a little give to it, but it's a little rubbery, and that's the key. You want something that's got some grip to it, so when you peg it down on your flesh, even through your pants, you press down, you go side to side, up and down, and circles each direction. You're gonna put some muscle into this, okay? Then you go point by point up your leg, and then again. That's using a ball, using a yoga block. I like this more because you can wedge a corner of it in there and really push quite hard on the block and it digs in there a little bit more and it's a little more specific. So you're going up and down, side to side, little circles. Am I gonna hurt anything, Dr. Paula? No, you're not. Up and down back and forth, side to side. If you use these tools, you will not, okay? So you're gonna go all the way up. You may, f and the reason why I want you to go all the way up is you may find that there's an adhesion up here that's contributing to this down here. Again, this is only to deal with the fascial part. You would follow this up with my gluteal isometric series and then do my leg series, but you wanna do that with the TheraBand. So you wanna do all of those processes. This would be the first process, which is release the fascia, get things moving better. Then you have to do strengthening. You have to follow this with strengthening after, okay? To do the IT band, same thing. You can use your hand and dig into all of these points, going up and down, side to side, little circles, going all the way up here. And then you're gonna go back. You can kind of grip underneath this and feel like, oh, there's some wiry feeling things here. And then there's this groove here and this big thick thing here. The big thick thing is the IT band. The little groove underneath and follow up is where I want you to go, okay? So you're gonna go up. And on me, this is where I get more tender. So this is where my tightness is. Your tightness might be somewhere else, okay? How often should I do this? Well, at least once a week, but you do not need to do this every day. Okay, you get the point, go all the way up. The other thing you can do if you have a yoga block is you can rest on the block. This is going to be more intense. So here you would just take your body and maneuver it up and down, side to side, and then move to the next spot. Up and down, side to side. So this is going to be a progression to the first technique I showed. Harder to do this with a ball, easier to do this with a block or with a foam roller. I actually like the yoga block more because I feel like it is, goes a little deeper. It's easier to rest on. You're not constantly rolling off of it. These are foam yoga blocks, okay? These are not the wood ones. Cork ones would work too. They're gonna be a little more intense. So if you don't have yoga blocks and you wanna order them, I would get foam blocks. They're pretty inexpensive. A set of two should cost you about 10 bucks. Okay, same with the side. You can do that on the on IT band, back and forth, up and down. You get the point, okay? And then to get the back part of the vastus lateralis, you would just twist your body a little bit here. Up and down. Side to side, if you can wedge that flesh on part of that corner there, you're gonna get more out of it. Up and down, okay, you get the point. <laughs> so a yoga block can be used for a lot more 
things than just yoga. It's a really good myofascial release tool. I use it all the time. Um, can I do this on the front of my thighs, Paula? Yes, you can. You can also do it back here on your hamstrings. You can do it on your calves. You can do it here on the front of your shins, called your pretibial muscles or your peroneal muscles. Things in the body have multiple names sometimes, um, but that's a different discussion for a different time. Okay, I hope you found this to be valuable. This is step one in how do I take care of my knee if I have pain around my kneecap, okay? Look for more videos coming from me. I'm Dr. Paula Sauer. You can email me at paula at alignptla.com. You can also leave a message in the comment section down below. And I uh, hope to see all of you very soon. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.